she had sexy long legs and a smile. It was nice when she asked me to dance. She did not have to ask twice. This poor country boy was kind of weak in the knees, but something about her soon put me at ease. For several months we had lots of fun, and on a hot August day we two became one. For two months we had a wonderful life, and Uncle Sam wrote, I want you, not your wife. But she stuck with me through thick and through thin, and if I had it to do over, kept her letters, I'd do it again. I don't know if I can say it. <laughs> do you like the poem that he wrote about you? Yeah. He wrote it. You ought to... <laughs> I was just asking how you thought about the poem. You I liked know. it a lot. It was very sweet. Yeah, it was. I thought it was, too. Lloyd, you're so uh, poetic. Do you have any other poems that you want to share? No, her grandson, step-grandson, Nick, that Ron married his mother. She had 60 long legs. This is the start of it. She had 60 long legs and hair that was red. I was the love of her life until she met Fred. Now he says, my grandma, may I have a treat? She gets it for him. She thinks it's so neat. He says, please and thank you, which is very nice. She gives him my pudding. He don't have to ask twice. Now I've been replaced by a much younger man, but I'm going to hang on as long as I can. <laughs> So I am at the farm where I basically grew up at. These people, um, there was a program set up in middle school in sixth grade where troubled kids could have a mentor. So in sixth grade, as soon as I got into sixth grade, they were basically like, I was immediately on the list. I was a very troubled kid. I got into lots of trouble. I already had um, a juvenile record. I had been on probation. I mean, it was just bad. And you know, that's just what happens whenever you don't have parents and you have a parent, but she doesn't really care. So, and you could basically do whatever you want. So it just happens when you have no structure in your home, your kids are gonna go and run around and go crazy and do what they want and get into trouble. So I got hooked up with this older lady and I remember them introducing me to her and I looked at her and the first thing I thought was, I, I can't believe they stuck me with this old lady. Like, what were they thinking? I have nothing in common with her. Like, I would, I'm not going to be able to talk to her or open up to her. This is so dumb. This is stupid. I can't, I can't believe that they just gave me this old lady as a mentor, I thought, I agreed to it because I thought I was going to get someone like young and hip and like cool aunt status and I didn't. I got someone who was old enough to be my grandma and I was not happy about the situation but luckily Nancy, that's her name, she's a very smart lady. She ended up just getting on my level and seeing what I was interested in and basically bonding with me on my own level, on things that I liked, and that rolled into her, us having a more personal relationship that turned into more of a mother-daughter relationship, which is something I so, so desperately needed at that point in my life. I had a mom who didn't care, who let me do whatever they want, whatever I wanted, and you know, I had friends who did have parents and they did care and they put down rules and were a bit more strict with their kids. And like deep down inside, I would be like, I wish my mom would care enough to correct me or give me a discipline. And it didn't happen. Um, she would not correct me she or discipline me. She would just take her anger out on me and just hit me whenever she wanted. And that, that's not parenting at all. She was never, ever there emotionally. 
um, only in like, uh, let's see, the last five, no, it was the last four years, my mom got into a car accident and she basically turned into a new person and that and after I started talking with her again, she, for the first time in my entire life, said that she loved me. Um, but before that, I never heard it. I never heard it from her as a child, ever. I never heard that she cared about me. Um, nothing. So, um, anyways, as an adult, she ended up kind of getting her personality back and remembered everything and we fell back out and so we're very estranged again but when I was a child it was very bad so these people basically took me into their home and made sure I grew up to be a decent human being I stopped getting in trouble um, within within months of them mentoring me I stopped getting in trouble because they actually cared about me and they told me they cared about me and they told me they loved me and that they care about my future and that they just want the best for me and they meant it they were always 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 there for me when I needed it um, schoolwork anything that I had questions about they were always there for me I ended up connecting with these people so much that um, it trickled down into my little brother my little brother, once he hit, where there's a six years difference between us, and once he hit sixth grade, um, Lloyd, which is Nancy's husband, ended up mentoring my little brother. So even though he had already been coming out and stuff, my little brother was basically on a worse path than me. He was, um, at that time, setting yards on fire, um, hitting walls so I mean, he was a second grade, first and second grader, and he was hitting walls so hard, he would punch holes into them. Um, well, these are like plaster walls, but still, not, not plaster, drywall, sorry, drywall walls. But, I mean, still, it was so bad. He would throw things. I remember um, I was so scared of him, even though I was six years older, that I would make sure to lock my bedroom at night because I was afraid that he might hurt me because he had such an anger problem which basically is I would say due to the parenting not having a dad and my mother basically not giving two craps about her kids so he got into the program and he um, like like me even before that had straightened up so much he basically turned into a really good kid a, and he's now an excellent um, brother. He's just a good person to be around. He has gone to tech school, tech college, and uh, they've encouraged him to go to college, and they basically just believe in us, which is something that we've never had before. And um, my brother and I basically don't talk to anyone who is blood-related because they don't care. The only thing that we have ever gotten from people who are blood-related is, you know, just hate, judgment and hate, and constant criticism. You know, even my grandparents didn't tell my, uh, my mother that they loved her, and that, of course, trickled down into my mother never saying that to us. And I can understand that, you know, I was going through some old pictures today of our family, and I saw some pictures of my mom with her parents and I you know I understand I know her parents were hard on her and beat her and she also had some other pretty serious issues when she was a kid and that just rolled over into parenthood I get it but I think that I had a pretty terrible childhood myself not only in my mother just not caring and then her beating me whenever she wanted to but um, some really serious issues, um, sexual molestation, not by my mother, not by my mother, um, but from my uncle, and it was just bad. When I told everyone, anyone who was blood-related, they called me a liar, told me I was going to hell, and it was just bad. No one cared, so I shut in, shut everything 
up and was basically an emotionless person and sometimes still show that um, now my husband calls me out on it a lot but it's just something I need to work on but these people who mentored me from sixth grade um, to eighth grade through the program and then continued to care about me after the program have have basically molded me into the person that I am and made me care and made me love other people and love myself and um, I cannot tell you I cannot tell you the impact these guys have had on me and my brother is so tremendous uh, my husband jokes <laughs> he jokes that I would probably be <laughs> I don't know, dead or living in the projects, filled in a house full of roaches and 12 kids by different baby daddies and uh, 600 pounds, but it's probably not a joke that pro I'd probably be dead or end up living off the government and having like 12 kids by who knows who and it would be awful. It would be an awful life but these guys have have put so much time and effort into making sure that me and my brother grow up as good people and not just good people people who really want to make a difference and make something of themselves and have something to show for it that um, it's hard not to deny that everything about me has basically Everything good about me has come from them. And I am so amazed that there are people out there like them. They're basically the two best people I have ever met in my entire life. Because uh, they just pour so much into other people. Like, so, so much into other people. It is unreal. Um, they really deserve some kind of award or something. But, anyways, if you ever get a chance to mentor someone even if you're in an RV I highly recommend you do it it is incredibly rewarding for you but more so for the other person but so this is my little brother so how long have you known Lloyd and Nancy 18 years plus yeah um, when did they start officially mentoring you when I was in sixth grade middle school is when Lloyd became my mentor after Nancy had been yours and I had gone with you because I wanted to not be left out and uh, you know meeting somebody like Lloyd you know you get to where they become your friend and you just it eats at you a little to not be with them because they're so important to you. I totally agree. What kind of things did, like, trouble-wise were you into before you met them? Like, what kind of ridiculous stuff? I used to stuff? be the little kid that would say, no trespassing, let's go trespass, and, uh, oh, maybe I could shoplift this or steal that, or, you know, if I could get away with it and nobody knows, who am I hurting? But, you know, Lloyd showed me that you've got to be a level-headed person and you've got to take responsibility for every one of your actions. So just having that in my life really showed me, you know, not having a father and whatnot, that you can still be a productive, wonderful, nice person, successful. Everything that you think you couldn't be you just got to put your mind to it, and Lloyd really helped me see that. I totally agree. Uh, what um, what changed after you met him? Like, did your grades get better, and did you feel like you could stay out of trouble more? I had somebody there to answer to, to uh, you know, he'd hear about something that I did, and he wasn't gonna let it slide like my mother would. So. You know, I had somebody to answer to now, and he wasn't going to take any any slack. Uh, had to be straight up. And, you know, just having that on me 
made me realize I need to be a better person because I have somebody that's trying to make my life better and I need to put forth my effort to show that I'm actually learning and I'm taking forth what I'm being told and I'm applying it to life. Yeah, did you uh, ever think that they would continue to be in our life this long? No, no I did not. I always looked at this as, oh, these were some people with some money and my sister got to go out there and she got to make some money and <laughs> that's what it felt like at first. And then, you know, if, if your mentor is going to be in your life, to be in your life, you're going to feel it and you're going to know it. And they're going to have a certain expectation out of you that they don't even have to mention, but you know it's there. And you kind of just, you feel it and you know that these people want to be a part of your life and make you such a better person in life that you start taking that on as just normal life. Sounds a little rambled, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Do you feel like he's more than a mentor now? Yeah, totally father figure. Yeah, 100%. I I agree. Um, do you feel like whenever you let him down and he didn't know about it that you had to come tell him? Not always. I mean, I'm sure I still got some secrets he doesn't know, but... I feel like I want to tell him, yeah. but I don't want him to be disappointed. You already uh, know how he's going to feel. Right. Yep. So, yeah, a little bit, I would say, would make me want to tell him, but then just the fact that I know that I should tell him and let him know is enough to let me know that this person's in my life. <laughs> Fuck all that. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You just skip all that out. <laughs> it's totally fine. I understand where you, what you're meaning to say. Right. Um, what kind of person do you think you would have turned out if they weren't in your life? I'd have been a version of my brother before he got his life straight. In and out of prison, jail, whatever. I'd have easily been one of those person, one of those people who would have been, you know, why don't you go steal that car? And like, you know, had I not had them in my life, they could have easily been an avenue. Absolutely. Do you feel like they're more family than your own blood? That's mean. <laughs> do you? I do. Uh, Lloyd and Nancy has have taken a responsibility beyond my own grandparents. Uh, or parents. Or my own parent. Parent. Um... Yeah, I owe them. I'm indebted for life. I totally agree. Anything that you want to say to people who are thinking about mentoring people? I think you definitely should. People definitely need this in their life. Um, it's changed my life. I believe it's changed my sister's life. And I've seen other people, you know, come out of a mentoring program better than they were. And if you don't think that you can change somebody, you really can. You know, if you put forth the effort and they really want to be a better person, they will. I, mean, that's just... I totally agree. Do you, um, how do you feel about them being ill right now with dementia and Parkinson's? They shouldn't deserve this. I don't feel, I don't feel the last days of their life should be like this. Um, they just don't deserve this. So, I'm kind of hurt about that. Ditto. I agree. Do you feel like us being in their life has changed their life? I would say so. <laughs> uh, they, you know, they stay in contact and we stay in contact with them. Uh, they obviously want to know how we're doing, so... Um, uh, yeah, above and beyond, for sure, they went beyond mentoring, and they became, what is it, surrogate grandparents? Technically parents. Let's not incorporate right. the age. But, 
Yeah. They were only supposed to be in our life three years. Right. Three school years. And I will know them until they are not here. And even beyond that, we'll remember. So, thank you very much. So, what made you and Nancy want to mentor a younger child or a kid at all? It was Nancy's idea. She was both retired. And she thought it was a good idea to try doing that. Maybe help somebody get some guidance that didn't have a nice home or had parents that didn't treat them properly. Mm -hmm. And you were just 100% in? You said, okay? I said, fine. Of course, we started out with a special couple. Got ya. The girl did not want her picture taken to start with. She was shy. <laughs> Very pretty girl. <laughs> you don't have to lie. <laughs> He's referring to me, everyone. And she was kind enough to let her six-year-old brother come with her when she'd come on a weekend. Uh, what did you think about us as kids whenever you met us and kind of learned that we, you know, we didn't have a, really a mom who cared and we were a bit of trouble? Did you think you got in over your head? No, ma'am. I figured I was stubborn enough. Sooner or later, there would be some results to start with, although it was not mentoring the young brother. I would sit him down and put my arm around his neck and say, I said no, and this is why I said no. And around here, no means no. That's, and he's not joking, people. <laughs> he slowly started to learn that ask her if, if you're told not to do something, not to do it. He also learned a few helpful things, to, like working on machinery. The young lady had multiple, she was an excellent artist and was smart hmm. in other ways. Hmm. It took her until she graduated from high school to really say thank you for what you've done. That's a typical teenager for you. Yeah. But she, once again, she was multi-talented. Aw, thank you. Um, did uh, you and Nancy ever think that the kids that you mentored would be in your life for this long? I think it's been 22, 23 years now. No, really did not expect that. But it's wonderful. Do you feel like uh, there's a, a bond there that's a little bit more than mentoring? Yes, ma'am. I you do. feel like they're part of your children, part of the family. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's a long time. Attached to them. And I think vice versa. Mm-hmm, very much so. Uh, was there any point in time when you guys were mentoring us that you were thinking, I just don't want them to come back because there's too much trouble? No, ma'am. Hmm. Never thought that. Do you think your wife ever thought that? I really don't know. I don't think she did. Yeah. I think sometimes I put Nancy through the ringer just like a typical kid would, but probably a little bit more so sometimes just because she cared you know, more than I thought she did. And she was glad to teach knitting, crocheting, things like that. Mm-hmm. She was. Um, how do you think that you were able to bond with us? Because it's, it's not so easy for kids to just bond with total strangers. What do you think helped you bond with us and get to the level that um, we could open up to you? I think maybe the fact that we did not 
have a temper, so to speak, if they did something wrong, we try to explain what would have been a better way of doing that. So basically just caring and um, speaking in calmer tones and uh, showing that you loved instead of uh, anger. Yes. That's good. What would you um, say to other people thinking about mentoring or if they're not thinking about mentoring, what would you say to encourage people to mentor kids? There are a lot of children that really need some adult supervision and caring. Go for it. You'll never regret it. I totally agree.